Hello everyone, welcome for our today MTM mentoring session and today our topic is the who am I exercise. For this I would like to ask for all of you to mute your microphones and now I'm giving the floor to Visa. Thank you Adina. Carissa, would you please start us out with a prayer? My pleasure. Oh dear Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus we come before you in a powerful and humbling fashion. You told us that the meek are shall inherit the earth and that is the power under control and we're here to learn um, that self-control and everything that we do um, and in that self-control is the word self lord and we thank you for each of our individual puzzle piece that only each of us can do to create the beautiful picture that you have painted before the foundation of this world oh lord thank you that we each have a part in it and that each part is so divinely unique and so joyful and so absolute, um, Lord, that you count on each of us. <laughs> and we love that. We love that you tell us to love your neighbor as self. Oh, Lord, what a great commandment after we love you first, God, that we turn and then love ourselves so that we can share that love like you did with your disciples and you showed them the three years you walked around, that you showed how we can love on everything in our path, just by who we are and how we leave the environment um, mentally, physically, spiritually around us, even when we walk in the room, that everybody will know that we love you, Jesus, and that we worship you. Amen. Amen. So the who am I? That's a big question for today. And um, first of all, so this whole session came about when Carissa and Carrie got together one day and uh, Carissa would you like to explain a little further like the whole idea behind it and then I will add on how we are making it a grand experience for today. My pleasure. Yes, uh, one of the MTM members and I got together and we were saying, you know, we are happy to make vision boards and we have all this family planning and planning for our jobs and planning for our um, giving and our charity. And how about first making a board or a book or a, um, a sacred little space uh, about us, you know, starting with who am I? And, and we talk about a mission statement and we've done that with Receive Joy so many times and we speak often, uh, Receive Joy speaks of putting yourself into your mission. So even every statement that you make, we can add in for my sake, <laughs> I choose. And then we put our mission statement in there. And it's like X plus Y equals Z. If you're X and you remove your little puzzle piece, um, the equation is completely different. So in everything we do, um, honoring God by putting ourself in the equation. And that really starts with knowing self and in this moment. And the reason God said, I am that I am is it's not I was a teacher, a preacher. Um, I used to have little kids. It's, he said, I am. All we have is the now, this present moment. And we too have to speak like Jesus did, I am that I am. And that vision board that we're making is the I am now self and a picture of you and the joy, all the little things that circulate around you should be things of joy. And we'll start today with the exercise of just writing words that describe the I am now me. Um, and it's really fun to see the I am now me I, I do believe when God tells us that he will, co will come before him and he will allow us to look at our life, he's going to look at us as the individual. A lot of us have roles where Mr. or Mrs. were a, a daughter or a son, were a niece or a nephew, were, um, we've, we graduated from kindergarten or middle school or high school or whatever our path was. Though so God's really going to say, your heart, as we call it, joy soup, that's the I am. And what is it that makes your heart sing? And in your vision of yourself, 
being aware of all the little components and, and Sylvie's so good at this of what makes the I am versus the I was <laughs> the I am that I am and if we could hold that little poster up or that page up uh, you could hand it out like make Xerox copies and hand them out <laughs> this is who I am and giving everybody this opportunity I am a lover of Christ I am the child of the most high I am a sunshiny, happy being in all that I do. I am somebody who enjoys pacing myself. So it, it's the, the fun of really understanding um, that when we are clearer, we can hand out more samples of who I am. And it's so important to honor the I amness of each of us because when you get happy about yourself, others around you can adjust to, to giving you and supporting you in your greatness. Oftentimes we, we uh, Kim mentioned this and she's one of the um, mentoring session uh, participants and she, she was saying, gosh, you know, we have to be aware that we might be living our spouse's life or our, if we're a caregiver, we might be living a lot of the life of the people we're caregiving, whether it's elderly people or young people. Um, if, we're, if we're married or if we're dating, be aware of how much of your energy is in pleasing someone else. And then is it on your self page? So if we're, if we're bending who we are in any way to please or to attempt to, right? Cause you can only please yourself and your Lord. Um, we have to be aware of that. And it's time then to really get back on your page of if you're a healthy person, what are you doing about your health? And if you're a happy person, how are you seeing yourself in the I am happy? I am Carissa experiencing happiness. So we have a, a lesson, Sylvia and I, um, with Receive Joy out. And it's, it's really amazing that even if we shift our words to I am Carissa, that's what the whole, like call it my poster board, is about the picture of me and all my happy little components to who I am and all the words that describe me. So I am Carissa temporarily experiencing everything in the day, the I am now moments. So um, go ahead, Sylvie, please comment and add in. Absolutely. Thank you so much for this great introduction. And first of all, I wish to bring everyone's awareness to one really vital fact. And this is a premise. So we all know that we are so much greater than the person that sits in the chair. This body we are using for this lifetime is a creation we have. And we have to differentiate ourselves from our creation. So there's, and, and I had this lovely talk with Michael last Friday where it really enforced me to bring this topic also here into our MTM. And I'm so happy, Michael, that you joined today. Um, that there's, uh, there's one thing, there's us as, as this child of God, this I am whatever I wish to create because I am the creator. And then on the other hand, we have all our creation. And Carissa always says, it's like it's our, our little tears and who is wagging who? So when we are the main person, who's wag are we wagging our tails or are we letting our tails wag us? So that's why we always, whatever we see in every circumstance, have to make the differentiation here of I am the creator and I created. And this is what Carissa also meant by I am Carissa and I'm temporarily doing something here or experiencing something, feeling, having the emotions, whatever we put into that. The truth is I am. I'm Sylvie, I'm, this, I'm the soul that gets to experience and express everything. And, and I recently read this beautiful book, uh, Friendship with God, and it also brought the point home of, we require ourselves to experience ourselves with everything around us, with persons, with circumstances, in order to know who we, who we are that we can actually have this fun thing together here. That's why we have this beautiful group that we can experience ourselves even better. So imagine when you are in, in a room that is completely white and there is zero anything around you, just white, you have zero idea of who you are because there's like, am I small? Am I big? There's zero comparison and, and in this, reality that we have here 
even though we are oneness on a super conscious level, we are here to experience our separation. And it's it's a fun of the separation. It's it's just getting hung up in the separation. That is where where the awareness has to come in that we are still one and we are still the soul and we can still play here on earth with the kind of separation. And when you see a little dot in this room on the wall, then you know, oh, I'm bigger than the dot. And, and then when another person comes in, you know, like in a relation to this person who you are. So that's why we're always saying everything is a mirror to you in a way of that you can compare and you can experience yourself. And, and this is what, what God ultimately wants to do with us, experience himself through us and our experiences. So, so and then we come to this now moment of this is a total joy I am in right now. Am I acting from a point of nowness or act, am I acting from a past point of reference? Am I still acting as a person who had a trauma? Am I still acting as uh, the five-year-old that really wishes to belong to my parents and I, uh, I made a habit, habit of a certain behavior because it served me when I was so many years old? Or am I acting from fear of a future that might never happen. So uh, how do I present myself in this moment? Am I getting into the situation out of trust that everything turns out wonderfully or am I going in of fear to avoid something? So this is what we always have to go back to in order to experience who I am. So what is now? And it's uh, as easy, I have a whole list of questions we can go through. And when I ask this question, I wish for you to just write the answers from your heart. It's zero thinking about it because when you start thinking then you think about okay what do others um, expect from me so uh, uh, does my husband want my favorite color to be red when my favorite color is blue so these kind of things so so go back into the nowness of now and, and uh, to be with this color example you probably when you were a kid you maybe had a different uh, favorite color you know like little girls love pink and then they grow into yellow and I had a yellow face and then I had a red face and now I have a blue face like Picasso you know all these phases and it's great because it shows that we we can choose and we can change and it's so beautiful so just take the color example as uh, as reference for everything just because you behaved a certain behavior in the first 10 years of your marriage, I mean, your husband ex uh, then expects you to behave on day number uh, 10,100, that you behave the same way as on day number three, when you have the right to change and be exactly who you are. And then uh, I love this, and Carissa always said, oh, you know what? I can pat myself on the shoulder. I reach exactly what I wished out of every situation. Let it be a marriage, let it be as a mother, I, I did it. And now, now I can move on to the next thing of, uh, of who am I? And, and it's great. So after we do this, you can go into every role you have with every other being and redefine what, what kind of role do you wish to be in this moment as well? So first we do it with ourselves and then we go in. Okay, so in the past, I might had this role uh, in, in relation to my husband or in relation to my kid, to the oldest daughter, to the youngest son. And then I, go, then I go in again, do I still wish to have this relation? And the same is true with parents. It's a different relation we have with parents in the beginning of our life when we are completely dependent on them. And then it turns around at some point, maybe they become completely dependent on us. And, and then we can redefine what that means for us in our beautiful life. And let's go back to ourselves. And I wish to read you something. I, I found a, like a writing Carissa and I did, I don't know, a few years back. I have zero idea when I wrote that at some point, or I was writing so much in the last, past half a year. And I was reading that I found, found it so wonderful what came out and must be inspired. So um, it's part of take inventory. And this is what we do now. We are taking inventory of our life in this present moment. So part of this connection is God gave us breath of life to investigate our own soul, to investigate ourself and to find our own joy. And also we have been in a habit in the past, quite a few of us to expect that somebody else is going to make us happy and somebody else uh, is going to lend us their joy. 
And we are going to uh, somehow plug into their joy instead of plugging into the source of God that helps us find our own joy and live within our own joy. And this is what we're doing here. We're plugging in into our own joy again. And, and uh, I also remembered when I meditated about the session today, remember in the old times when you had like these friendship books in school and it had all these fun questions. Did you have that as well in, with you? So we, there was like, oh, what was your name? What's your birth date? Uh, what do you want to be when you grow up? What's your favorite color? Um, so, and then all kinds of friendship questions and you get to know your friends really well through that. And when you received one of those books, it took me a couple of hours to fill it in because it's always in the same moment you were growing up so fast. Okay, what, what is my favorite movie right now? And what, what music am I listening to in this moment when I fill in this friendship book? It was so interesting. So, so it really made us stop for a moment and ponder and be with us in this moment to, to choose an answer that fits us, that comes from the heart. And, and so um, the first questions I have, I took from these kind of friendship books, I researched a little bit and, and made it so fun that we can, uh, that you can make a folder. So the first idea was like have a Manila folder uh, where you create everything. So write it down in your notebook first, all the answers, and then create like a whole, as Carissa say, handout folder, vision board with it. Just uh, have fun. And uh, I will also put with this video on the MTM, I will put all my 150 questions I have because I probably, we can only go through a few today. <laughs> so, uh, and then go in and you can, you can read that and we make a whole lesson out of that as well. And I will also post uh, while someone else is speaking, I will post our I am labeled lesson here for $1, you can download this lesson and, and, and read again, uh, like, what is it, um, what awareness do you have to have with the I am labeling? So we, we talked a little bit about it. If you wish to go deeper into that, we have this whole lesson as Carissa said. So, um, yeah, so are you ready? Are you ready to ask yourself, who are you? So then take your piece of paper, take your pen. And then the first thing we write down is, how do you wish to be called? How do you call yourself in this moment? Okay, and the next one, now we have to be really honest here because somehow it's a topic that is a little off for some of us and we have to investigate, go back and investigate why that is. But we're really honest, like right now in this, we, we talked about the illusion of time last, uh, the last time. Um, however, we have this counting system here on earth right now in your experience. How old are you? And you can also write, I mean, we can also differentiate uh, between Okay, how old are you like on this earth? How old are you inside? Are you, is there, is it the same? Or are you still living out some things that has still to be solved from your teens? Are you behaving so there's this Peter Pan thing they say, you know, when, you always wish to stay young and in your heart you're 17 and write down 17 that's who you are for yourself in this moment and then write down what is your birthday when do you celebrate yourself once a year for being born and have others celebrate you You have that written down. Let's go and go for those fun things as, okay, what is your aerial sign? You know, what is the astrological sign that we use here? So I'm a Pisces. So that makes me also a water sign. So you can write down what's your element.
Okay, then the next one that is really interesting and we had a lot of um, uh, talks about that already. So um, I can send you the website if you still want to look at that, but what is your birth card? And there's a website I can, I can type in the chat where you can look that up and it's super interesting to, to read about your birth card. However, it's something, it's an agreement you came in with and it is who you are. So uh, Chris and I, we find it very interesting to, to add this to the who are you and what I did at some point, I, um, uh, I made one of these who am I cards for one of our miracle group members. And I, I took like a playing card, like the real playing card from the deck and I put it on her, on the card that she can see who, who is she. And I will type in the chat right now, the website where you can look to figure out your birth card. And while you're typing, I'll, I'll mention to everyone, what's so nice about really knowing who you are, it's so that you can react nicely and communicate and share and work with all those around you and have more compassion, um, understanding that we're all like, it's like the hand of cards you're dealt when you come in in a beautiful way. It's who you are, and it's so beautiful to know that, and then to experience your children and your neighbors and your friends, and honor them exactly where they are. Jesus met everyone exactly where they were. That's why he went out, and the church was outside of him, and he walked and and had experiences. And we too can experience our life even more smoothly as we understand more about and declare who I am. Thank you. Okay, the website is in the chat, so look it up. And then the next one is from the medicine wheel. What is your totem animal? And, and this is easy. You can just Google it in a way of you put in your birthday and then write totem animal or medicine wheel with it. And Carissa, can you have like two sentences about that? My pleasure. Yes. Uh... Again, we're, we're all like an animal. There's an animal instinct, we say in America, animal instinct in us. And, and it's amazing. And it really helped me to learn the animal instinct that is available within you. And it's just beautiful. It was a girlfriend of mine who wrote the book. Um, and it very much was divinely inspired for meeting her and um, I suggest it to everyone. So it does tell you what your strong points are. It, I happen to be a snake and a snake um, represents, if you remember the medical um, cross, it, it, it winds around and that's actually the agreed medical uh, symbol. And so a same in American Indians and they used to have totem poles. That's what we call them, your totem animal. And they would put totem poles outside of their homes. In Alaska, if you've ever had the privilege of visiting, they have still totem poles out there. And it's carved different animals. And those are the animals of the, that are living in the house, the people. So if you have a bear, we know the behavior of a bear. I, in my profession, love to work with people and their health. So for me, my birthright as a snake is being used every day because when I write down my purpose, and that's one question you can write down and please answer that, what is your purpose right coming in this now? What is your purpose? And for me, it's definitely health. And anybody who knows me loves and knows that health is my purpose. Um, so please do write down the word purpose and then uh, what's a word or two that describes you. Yeah, so that's another great thing to learn, the totem animal. And we can always have a session on all these. Happy to do it. Okay. And, and we also have a, uh, on, on the Receive Joy YouTube channel, we do have a session that is called Know Thyself. And uh, that was a miracle meeting where we actually talked about that for, and, and really explained everything. So I can also send you the link to that one. That is. So if you wish to learn more about your birth cards and, and these kind of things we were talking about in the last five minutes. Let's go back to our questions of who we are right now. And, and let's go back to the old questions from our childhood and, and was asked, what are your hobbies? I mean, we even put that on a resume still here in Germany, our hobbies. Because uh, besides 
going to work <laughs> and employer still wishes to know what what their employees like what what is uh what defines them a little bit and then keep on writing uh while i post the link for the youtube channel keep on writing what kind of music do you like to listen to what kind of movies do you like to watch And when you have that, you can also write down what kind of animals do you like? What's your favorite animal? <laughs> Is it your pet? For me, it's hammerhead sharks. And now what kind of persons do you like to be around? Is there any, do you have favorite persons in your life? Who do you enjoy? Or is it a trait they have that you enjoy to be around? Some people like to be around people who are always in action and encourage them to take the next step. And others like someone around them that calms them down. Now on the same, same side, write down who are you in this equation? Are you the one encouraging? Are you, um, are you more the calm one? So who are you? And Carissa, maybe you want to talk a little bit more about the four quadrants, just a little bit. There's a whole, whole thing in the, in the link I will send you in a moment. Sure, absolutely. That's such a wonderful, thanks for reminding me about that. Another um, friend that came and rang the doorbell and became a good friend and again, God brings everybody in for a reason into your space. If you believe that he, your life was divinely inspired from the beginning of time, uh, the beginning of the foundation of this universe, and I do, that each person who comes in and brings an entire system with them that it was divinely inspired in their life, I wish to share with others. So this system that downloaded into her was that there are four quadrants and we have we do well balancing like north, south, east, and west. And the first quadrant are the doers in this world. And of course, their language is what are we doing today? You could just listen to the language. And that opposing them is the southern quadrant. Those are the thinkers. I'll think about it and get back to you. So you have the thinkers and the doers balancing each other out. And then the other two are the planners and the consequence people the if then. So their language is always if then. If you have a child that's a consequence person, they're going to go into a semester of school and they're going to figure out what they need to do to get whatever mark it is. And every day they can tell you what grade or what points they already have. And other people are <laughs> like, it's the first week of school. <laughs> I haven't even thought about that. And they already know every single point and what it's gonna to take to get them the B or the C or the A or, or you know, to graduate. So, so those, they live in consequence. And what's is great is the planner then is the party planner. We've, we've heard of the wedding planners and we need those people. And they look at the napkin color and their, their phrase is when everyone's happy, I'm happy. And the consequence person is if it's fun to me, I'll engage. And the doer is when I figure it out, you'll all be okay. And the thinker down here says we can all do better. Now that's that's a theme in the hard drive of these four quadrants, and we each have one of them. As the, we have all four of them, the one of them takes over. And for me, I as a child was very much the it's all if it's fun for me, I'm engaging 100. percent And now I'm more in the thinker role, and that is we can all do better. And here we are <laughs> improving ourselves. So. It's amazing though, understand that your children and, and everybody around you, your friends, your neighbors are also have one of these four systems, this hard drives going around. And what's amazing is if you look at a clove, 
there's four, it kind of looks like a, a cross and four balls, the, the tip of a clove. And, and what came to her from Jesus was see love. And when we can see everybody in their perfection is see love, clove. It's like the head of a clove. And, and so we can just see love when we, when we can understand why for my one child as a party planner, being on time is the most ultimate thing, even if it's just a, a, a rehearsal, you know, a, a regular class, a friendship class uh, outside of school. So you see, this is amazing. So to honor that person as a planner was to take her on time, always be there five minutes early for her. It, it gave her the comfort as a planner. And again, you pull, so you think the thought, you plan the deed, you do the action, and it has consequences. So thus, God made it perfect that we each are part of a group of, that works the hard drive. And it's so lovely. Thank you, Sylvie. Thank you. Wonderful. So um, next question. Right now, what is your biggest wish? And it's just a question that you know your heart. Because we we have all these, uh, we go back into our miracle sharing and asking next week, what do you really wish to create? So we are completely in creator's mode next Monday again. Right now, I just wish to know that you know your heart of, of your biggest wish right now. Just to know yourself, what, where, where is it you still wish to go? And again, we made that also a lesson before and we wrote out our, our stories about everything. But just, just in this moment, what's on your heart? Just that you, you know yourself. And then we had like a beautiful lesson about praising yourself. So, and I wish for you to remember everything that you said when you praised yourself for a minute. And I wish you also to add these things what can you say about yourself? What is the goodness about you? What makes you that unique puzzle piece? And this is maybe a question you ponder a little bit this week about, a little more. And this is just an overview session here. There's so much more we can, we can put into that. Just add your skills, your talents, and really answer for yourself, what makes me the puzzle piece? Why do I have this exact shape and form and these colors I show? So why did I choose this contract with God to come here? And this is a very, very important question in the know thyself realm. And it has to do with your, with your mission, of course. So it just, you can start defining, as Carissa said at the beginning, words about you. So whenever you hear a word that really talks to you, and, we, and I, I shared with you at some point that for sometimes like certain words with F that started with F really talked to me. It was faith and fun and fulfillment, follow through, focus, finish, fun. So all these kind of F words that, that are, were on my collection list. And it's so fun to see that they all started with an F. So we have this whole lesson about uh, received choice F words. <laughs> so, but what are your words? speak to you that makes your heart sing is it something like encouragement empowerment learning growing creation miracles growth it's probably one of some of those because you're sitting here with us <laughs> health so what what words make your heart sing what are some verbs some action items um, even if it's like being breathing what are some verbs that talk to you? Is it dancing, gardening, you know, make it hobby wise? Or is it something like being, taking action, playing, laughing, smiling? And we did like the whole, we have a whole lesson about this beautiful word list where we just write 
everything that speaks our heart. And, and you can see it's like this lesson here as a compilation of so many things, just an overview of knowing yourself. Okay, so when you have that, So remember to write your life's mission. And here's also a reminder, um, I'm doing an exercise now every morning where I, where I answer a couple of questions. It's uh, part of my morning routine. And part of it is to write my mission down every single day. Yes, I, had, I do have it uh, memorized. It's just so amazing every morning when you write it again to, to reinforce why, why am I breathing on this earth? And, and this gives me a whole new perspective on the day. And, and focusing on the, on the main important things. And now I have a really fun question for you. When did you last surprise yourself? Are you still able to surprise yourself? Or is it such a rut, such a routine you're in? Do you like surprises? I'll answer that first. Do you like to surprise yourself? And then with what did you surprise yourself? Do you let God surprise you? I mean, I'm in awe every day about humanity. It surprises me every single day. The creativity there is is beyond anything. So, and it's fun. I mean, I was on cruise ships and every day we, I, I mean, there was zero television for me because uh, the, it was better than any Spanish telenovela, honestly, what was happening every day with, if you put like 2000 people on a, on a ship, it's amazing what creativity comes out there. So it's, it's great. So, and we still have that in our life um, to, to watch. So are you also in awe of this or do you have other emotions? Then you have to check yourself because everything is here to just be in awe and wonder. It's just an experience. Just remember your super conscious just wishes to experience and you put the meaning on it. So, so what, what was the last fun thing you did? Or what is fun for you in this moment? And um, I know we have this whole lesson about our fun list. Just write down two, three things right now. What is fun for you? And this beautiful age you wrote down in the beginning with your beautiful nickname you call yourself, what is fun for this person? What brings you joy? We already answered the question, what kind of music is fun for you? So also maybe you wrote down what kind of art do you like? And then write down, who are your people? You know, who are your best friends? Who are the five people around you? You know, you, you become like the five people you are around. So who are your five people? And then as part of one of the meditations you, you are about to do this week, maybe you ask yourself, are these the five people I really wish to have around me? Are these the ones, you know, when I think about these five persons, do I wish to become like them? Or is it maybe a requirement to exchange one or two of those in order to be the best version of myself at this age we've put down? You know, can I hang out a little bit more with someone else? Can I push my own ideas? Can I push my own insights with adding someone else? Do I have a mentor? So write down, who's my mentor in this moment? Who holds me to my highest self? Who inspires me? Who has a different perspective from me that I can see myself more clear? So who's your mentor? And then the next question is, 
Who's your protege? Who do you train? Who are you mentoring? Who are you teaching? So if you have kids, is it your kids? Is it the best friend that you have an exchange of, of sorts? Or are you at a point in your life, maybe you have to train someone, take someone on to give your legacy further. And always it can be more than one. So I just wish you to write down one or more. And we had the question with fun and joy. Just listen to your heart right now, one more time. What makes you truly happy? And these answers are just for you. So you can be absolutely honest. And this is one thing that when we, when we let our ego in, when we let our, the part of us in that is listening to someone else, we might answer differently. So this is really just about your heart. What makes you truly happy right now? And then because we are always so much into gratitude, Write two, three things that you're really, truly grateful for in this moment now, when you investigate yourself. I mean, just the pure decision of jumping down here into this body and experiencing it all, oh, wow, I mean, that is, that is huge. And we can be so grateful for that we make this decision that we had our contract with God, that we came here to experience it all. And that we have the possibility to have emotions, a whole range of emotions, something to be grateful for, breath of life. So you know yourself better when you know what you're grateful for. And then a question that is really deep and it really gives you the answers of who you are right now. If that is your last day here on earth, this one, this moment, this day, the next 24 hours, that's it. What would you do? What would you think? How would you use that last day to make it count? And it's also a really interesting perspective when, when you think about, okay, um, when you are in your last week of being and you have this image of sitting in a rocking chair, thinking back over life, having all the grandkids around and all the family we, are, we have that, and our friends. What is something you think about that you still wish to achieve? Or are you completely happy in, in this moment? Or is there something, and we call this in the worldly term regret, is there something you still wish to add to your life? That you still wish to experience, that you wish to have done? Is there something you can do right now? So, or think about, um, there's this term bucket list, all these things you wish to do, all the places you wish to see. And this is something for your now time, or do you wish to push it again further ahead? So when I was young, I mean, the first thing I said is like, I will travel the whole wide world when I'm young, because I saw all these people going into pension and then starting to travel. And so, and then the health was like the opposite of what you wish to do. And then I worked on a cruise ship and I saw how people saved up their whole life to do this one cruise. And then maybe the weather was off and this whole experience was less than that what they anticipated. So what are we waiting for? So I wish, just wish us to get out of this waiting state and do it now. So I traveled the whole wide world when I was in my thirties and my twenties, thirties. I did it all because I had the, the health for it. And, and still now you see all the requirements always change. I mean, back then there was, there was other, it was easier to go over borders and it was easier to travel by itself and there was less regulations. It always changes. So 
can we do it now that it's that it's easier on us and i know that is uh, something mike sometimes talks about when he's asking things that he wishes to do certain things now so can we allow ourselves can we can we incorporate that somehow so when we say oh we we're going to visit and see each other can we set a date can we actually jump on a plane and do that can we do it now so allow yourself and this is like the part of then live by design and, and design it more and better right now we are in the now you know i'm going a little bit afar i just want wish to for you to see that there is a, uh, a norm that we subscribe to in society like a humanity uh, an agreement and then there is our own our own heart and our own soul and from the very beginning i was very in tune with my soul that i said okay i'm going to the us to learn english that's the only way i can learn english so i went and then god opened every door so god will open all the doors for you as well for whatever that is you put on your list right now and then i always said i'm going to see the whole wide world and that's what i did for many years traveled everywhere and i'm so happy about that i did because i know right now my energy level is different i enjoy different things i now i enjoy my privacy i enjoy a sunday laziness i enjoy reading a book i can read a book the whole day instead of traveling through different cities so it's it's different in every part of our life so we have to also acknowledge where we are with our body and yes everything is possible it's just different it's, it's a little it's another experience it's another exp so even Carissa's mom when she went to Costa Rica she was ziplining it's possible it's great you can with over 80 you can do your ziplining or you can do it in your 20s so it's it's all up to you it's everything goes and this is a great thing okay next question oh if you were an animal which one will it be <laughs> and also why you know i explained it to you a little bit <laughs> i know my sister would be a cat that's for sure I probably would be like some sort of water animal. I always saw, I see myself like, like a dolphin jumping around. <laughs> or maybe you wish to be a bird to fly and see everything from the sky. Okay, next big question. What do you wish to be remembered for? Then what is your favorite food? Really fun thing for right now. And next one. And I know I go a little bit faster just to show you there's so much and you can just add all the questions and I will have a document for Edina to put with this recording with a lot of questions. And when the lesson is out with a lot of questions, I will have 365 questions all together. So that means this lesson you can every morning when you do your devotional your contemplation or you go into meditation that day you can answer this one question about yourself to just be in the now in the now moment so this gives you a whole year of experiencing yourself and defining yourself so that would be so much fun i let you know when that is out so what's your favorite number So for me, I always say 703. And then when I looked at it a little bit deeper in the numerology of things, it, it actually means Christ Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. And it's so interesting that this is my number. And then all three and seven, three and seven are my birth cards. So even that is, is the same. And then I see three and seven, seven and three, 307. So every day I... I Look at my watch as either 307 or in the evening i will look at my watch as 703 so these are my numbers and i then i look up what it means so when you have a number look it up 
and just type it in into Google, you know, like the number and meaning or angel number, something like that. And it always gives you some insights about yourself. It's so fun. Then write down, is there anything you would like to try? Is there something new? Because even you now, body in this moment, it was just experience. Is there something you can add to your experience in this now moment? And then easy things like, what's your favorite flower? And maybe this week go out and get yourself this flower to look at it and, and contemplate a little bit more of, okay, this is my favorite flower, who am I? Can I investigate my heart a little bit more? Because it's the theme of the week. Is there any clubs you belong to? Do you wish to belong to a club? Are you a club person? <laughs> to meet the same like-minded people you are, like you. How do you like to spend your pastime? So we talked about hobbies. So how do you spend your day? If it's your ideal day, you make up a list about your ideal day. What is it? You know, when do you get up? Or are you sleeping in? What kind of foods do you have? What kind of activities? Who is with you? What's your ideal day? Is it in a park with your kids? I'm going to Disney. <laughs> For me, it probably includes scuba diving. Okay, so as I said, like I have over 150 questions already. Let me see. Uh, yeah. So, and this is just the tip of the iceberg for you to get you started. And since we have five minutes left on today's call, I wish to wrap it up today with this kind of thoughts and invite you all to make this week about investigating your soul and what is fun for you, what is joy, and answering these questions a little bit more in detail. And some of there, there were like really an invitation for open end to invest in yourself. Especially the one with, when you have one day left on earth, what is your day like? In comparison, what's your ideal day? It's a completely different day, right? It's a completely different day. And you can have, and you will have both. And think about the music, the poems you like, the books that influenced you. There's so much. There's so much to investigate your soul and find your joy. And then make a promise to yourself that right now you accept this version of yourself because it's a now moment. You're completely satisfied with your now moment, who you are now. You love yourself exactly how you are right now. You choose to be this person right now because you obviously chose it because that's the version you are. So accept it, love it, acknowledge yourself, celebrate the nowness of who it is. And we know we can always change. We can always make different choices. It's all good and valid. And right now we made those choices. So celebrate yourself for those choices because they're good. Because every choice is good. Everything is an experience. Everything is great. And then keep the things you wish to keep. Pass on the things you wish to pass on. And now you have a little bit more awareness. And this is all it is. Just a little bit more awareness. And always remember, this is your creation. Your creation is different from who you are. So who are you? And then what, and then next week we go back into our miracle sharing and asking and asking, what are we creating? Because now we know who we are and we can differentiate from all the tales that we are creating. You are this unique, beautiful puzzle piece. 
and you see it now on your piece of paper right in front of you you are so unique you're so because when i look at all yours there will be so completely different answers correct even though we are meeting here we have matching particles we have matching interests and still we are so we have our unique thumbprint so beautiful Okay, any comments, questions? Carissa, go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. That was a beautiful, Sylvie Purse. I want to um, encourage you and, and thank you for uh, the beautiful questions. And I wrote down lots and I'm excited to put them all on a big board. Um, reminding everybody that we live in this life of contrast designed by God so that we know the difference between inside when we're outside. And the, when you see a donut hole, because you've seen a donut, you know that that's a donut hole. And, and the appearance that sometimes things might be a challenge versus smooth sailing and smooth and light and easy, that the great is the diversity. And, and it's this contrast that we live in that can give us this ability to love more and to have the over, um, be overjoyed and have the cup running over. Um, and then also reminding everybody the Sedona method shows us that we are, let's say this pen represents us. And so often we think that um, we're the emotions of our body, like the tight fist. If we just allow all the emotions, like Sylvie saying, the, the life itself, the, the dog versus the tails wagging us, uh, make sure that you just free up all that emotion. And when we free up all the emotion, we can set the true joy of ourselves free. And then that freedom can allow everybody attached to us if they were spokes on a wheel to be able to roll around and do their whole greatness and experience life in all ways. So just be aware that a lot of us go through life where all the experiences and the emotions illusionarily bind us and all we have to do is just got the whole world in our hands. Thank you, Sylvie. Okay, any other comment, question? I'm closing in prayer. Michael, can you do us the honor please today to close us in prayer? Just a short little. Did you're asked to do what now? Sorry, a short little prayer? No, I asked Micah. Oh, I thought you said Michael. Sorry. <laughs> because she's the first time with us and I, I she, she prays so beautifully. So I wish you all to receive her blessing. I'm not sure if I'm comfortable with that in a group. <laughs> just close your eyes and just say from your heart whatever comes. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you for each person on this call, even though we may not know each other, and um, uh, but we're here to learn, uh, first of all, who am I? And Lord, just help us to really go through this week and think about all the different questions and make a vision board and do some journaling. And we just ask you, to um, align our hearts with our mind and allow us to uh, let go anything that binds us so that we can experience the joy and the freedom and living life to our fullest. Uh, Lord, just, uh, um, just help us to, I, I'm nervous, Lord. So, um, hmm, just, uh, just be with us, Lord. Just be with us this coming week. And thank you so much for all the energy you put together in this room on this call. And thank you so much that you allow us to, to grow and that we can tickle each other to live the best version of ourselves and, and just step out of the comfort zone into, into our greater self and then realize that the who am I is so much greater than we currently think it is. Thank you so much, Lord, that you help us to, to see the love the so sea love, um, the club that there is. And, and we just embrace you, we praise you, we love you. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
Amen. Thank you so much, everyone. And Love so you all. God bless you. Blessing to see all your smiles and who you are. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Carissa. Thank you, Sylvie. <laughs> God bless everyone.